All right. Good evening, everyone. It's a couple minutes after the hour, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so my name is Selena Martinez. I'm a project manager with BLM Arizona, and I assist our renewable energy lead, Derek Eisenbach, with the variance process on incoming renewable applications. Derek couldn't attend this evening's meeting, so I'll be leading the meeting for us this evening. I also wanted to point out that Matt Drainick, um, who is the Phoenix District Office Renewable Energy Project Manager, is here with us this evening. This meeting will present the proposed Caballero and Southwest Crossroads solar energy projects put forth by Avantis and Long Road Energy. Please note the e-planning website, Lower Sonoran Field Office postal address, and the Phoenix District Office solar email address these are the various methods for submitting comments on tonight's meeting. This information will also be shown on the next slide, and we will be dropping the e-planning website in the chat for you guys to have as well. All right, before we get started with the project presentations, I just wanted to call your attention to some of the BLM staff mem members listed on the slide and also set some ground rules for how we'll proceed with the meeting. I'm joined by a few of my colleagues from our Phoenix District Office and Lower Sonoran Field Office, some of whose names and posi positions are shown on the slide. And I can't see all the attendees right now, so I'm not sure if every one of these um, employees are in attendance, but these are some important um, names for you to keep in mind. We also have the applicants, Avantis and Long Road, and their consultants who will be presenting the projects and they are here to answer any questions related to what they are proposing, the technology or related research that has been completed to date. All right, before turning it over to the applicants, let me give a brief overview of the variance process and set some ground rules for the meeting. Solar energy generation is one of the many multiple uses that are allowed on BLM land. All of the approved uses on BLM land are laid out in the resource management plans for each field office. One of the steps in evaluating solar projects is to go through the variance process. This process is laid out in the Western Solar Plan, also known as the Solar PEIS, which came out in 2012 and addresses how solar will be managed on BLM land in six Western states. That include Arizona, California, Nevada, Utah, New Mexico and Colorado. This plan designated areas appropriate for solar development. These areas are called solar energy zone. That's what you see in green on the screen. There were also other areas excluded from solar energy development that are deemed to have more significant resource concerns, such as national conservation lands, wilderness areas, wilderness study areas, wild and scenic river corridors, areas of critical environmental concern, areas having topography with sleep, steep slopes, and other factors totaling 32 exclusion criteria. That is what's shown in yellow, highlighted in yellow. All right, all other areas that haven't been mentioned are determined solar variance areas. And forgive me, the exclusion areas are highlighted in red. The solar variance is highlighted in yellow. And these areas might be appropriate for solar development, but they require extra due diligence to ensure that the proposed project complies with resource management plan. Preliminary research on the applicant's part is also required as a sort of desktop analysis to provide a briefing to BLM state and national leadership to determine whether the proposed project can proceed into NEPA. This is essentially the solar variance process. All right, in this, slide, in this slide, you could see where we are in the process. There will be a 30-day window from today to get comments in, which closes on September 4th. Any comments received will be compiled and included in a briefing package that will be, be presented to state and national leadership for concurrence later this fall. If concurrence is granted, then the project will proceed in NEPA, which will ultimately lead to a decision on the project. If the project goes into NEPA, you will have an opportunity to be involved in the scoping process and comment on the draft and final analyses. At the end of this evening's presentation, we will open the floor for questions and answers. 
please hold your questions until the end. You can either present questions in the chat box or by raising your hand. For those unfamiliar with Zoom, there is a ribbon at the bottom of your screen with various buttons. There's a reactions button with a smiley face on it. Click that and you will see the raise hand button. To access the chat, click on the chat button in the bottom ribbon and that will open the chat window. If you raise your hand, feel free to come off of mute when you're called on. We will also accept written comments, either via postal mail or email. Please note that this is a public meeting and it is being recorded. If you do not wish to speak or come on camera, you're invited to submit comments in writing. They will become part of the public record. Okay, now I will stop screen sharing and I'll hand it over to Avantis to introduce themselves and proceed with the presentation. Thanks, Selena. We'll get our PowerPoint pulled up here. Thanks. So my name is Amy Cordell, and I am the Renewable Energy Lead at Environmental Management and Planning Solutions, Inc. And I will be presenting a high-level overview of the Caballero Solar Project today in support of this variance process. So on our presentation, we'll introduce the proposed project and provide an overview of the baseline conditions at the site. But before we get to that, I'd like to turn it over to Tracy Hamilton to introduce herself and provide a quick overview of the company. Tracy? Thanks, Amy. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Hamilton. I am Director of Arizona Permitting for the Applicant and the Permitting Lead for the Caballero Solar Project. Uh, so the proposed project is being developed by a top clean energy developer with an industry-leading pipeline capable of providing power for over 30 million people. Uh, additionally, we have more than a decade of success across the Southwest and approximately four gigawatts in various stages of development in Arizona with a total Southwest pipeline of over 20 gigawatts. Amy, I'll pass it back to you. Thanks, Tracy. So the Caballero project is a proposed 200 megawatt photovoltaic and battery storage project in unincorporated Maricopa County, Arizona. The proposed site is south of State Route 238 and just north of the Sonoran Desert National Monument. It's proposed to interconnect to the existing Pinal West substation, which you can see on the um, west side, east side of the map. Thank you, Francis. The site is approximately 1,780 acres. Approximately 1,280 are BLM administered lands. These are shown in yellow and the rest are private lands shown in white. So I will note that the project described in the variance factor analysis report on BLM's e-planning website has changed. The current um, project footprint, which is shown here, proposes the same BLM lands, but removes the state lands parcel shown in blue, just northwest of the project footprint. So the project would contain all of the typical components of a PV solar facility shown here, as well as a battery storage system to store energy for delivery when power is needed. Since we're still in the preliminary planning phases, um, no site layout has been developed yet, but the project site as shown here does avoid mapped floodplains, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Power from the site would be conveyed via a five mile long 500 kV Gentai line to the existing Salt River Project terminal at the Pinal West substation. The preferred route is the one shown here in green, but we are also um, evaluating a second route that is shown here in red. 
If the project clears the variance process, we would undertake a number of pre-construction activities. Uh, these would include a full range of surveys and baseline studies to inform site engineering and design and also the NEPA analysis. Construction of the project is anticipated to take around 18 months. Access to the site would be via existing routes as much as possible. Um, it would be necessary to improve um, some or many of the routes. We anticipate that vegetation would need to be cleared in um, for some of the project components, but would be left in place in other areas of the solar fields to the extent possible. So once powered, we anticipate the facility would operate for around 30 years or more. So earlier in the year, we prepared a variance factor analysis report or the VFAR report that's posted on the ePlanning website. Chapter three of that report has an overview of the baseline environmental conditions of this site that I'll talk about on this slide and in the next several slides. So this information was developed primarily through a desktop analysis and would be updated and refined through site-specific surveys and studies and coordination with agencies and other stakeholders, you know, assuming that we move through the variance process. So because the proposed project footprint has changed a bit since the VFAR report was prepared, we have made a note on some of these slides where the information is different um, than what's in the report to help with your commenting on this um, project. So as described previously, the proposed project would be in unincorporated Maricopa County. Surrounding lands in the area are primarily undeveloped rural uses. The BLM lands within the proposed site are managed right now as VRM class Three. Class three would allow for a moderate level of change to these lands. There aren't any special management areas, lands managed for wilderness characteristics, or any known mining claims on this site. There is one National Historic Trail and one ACEC that are located a few miles north of the site. When we um, go through further analysis, we would determine if those are within the view shed of the project or not. Uh, lastly, the proposed project site is west of the future I-11 corridor, but the proposed Gentai route would cross that corridor. Our cultural resources staff performed a record search for the proposed project site and a one mile buffer area around the site that uh, we're terming the study area. The review looked at records from the National Register Information System and AZ site, as well as historical documents that were um, publicly available. So these included things like plats, USGS maps, and historic aerial photography. The search indicated that the entire project site had been surveyed during a past investigation around 2010, but the exact nature of that investigation isn't exactly clear from the literature. But based on data from AZ site and some other sources, there's one previously recorded site on BLM lands and four sites on private lands within the project boundary. And there were an additional 22 sites recorded in the overall study area. If the project moves forward, we would move into performing a class one literature review and a class three pedestrian survey and initiate um, through the BLM tribal consultation so that we could further characterize the site and then work to identify any measures to avoid or mitigate impacts. The proposed project site consists mostly of Sonoran desert scrub habitat. And based on our desktop analysis, 
there's likely no designated or proposed critical habitat, important bird areas, or suitable nesting habitat for eagle on the project site. So the pro proposed site is in the range of three federally listed species. These include the California least tern, the yellow-billed cuckoo, and the Sonoran pronghorn. So based on Arizona Game and Fish's online review tool, special status species near the site might include the ones shown on the screen. Those include Sonoran green toad, antelope jackrabbit, and Sonoran desert tortoise. So I will note that the project site is not within any category one, two, or three desert tortoise habitat but the alternate gentite route would span category two habitat along part of its route. And then as also shown on the slide, the project site does lie within a diffuse wildlife movement area. Um, and there's other wildlife corridors located to the east of the site. So this information is very preliminary. And moving forward, we would work with BLM and wildlife agencies to determine future survey needs and analysis um, that would be needed to fully characterize the site. As shown on this next map, the general project area contains a number of unnamed ephemeral drainages. The project site itself does not contain any wetlands or perennial or intermittent streams. The footprint, um, as we talked about before, would avoid any zone A floodplains that are located here in blue. And uh, assuming the project, and if the project moves forward, uh, we would undertake a jurisdictional delineation and hydrological studies to inform design features and mitigation measures. And um, as well, a number of plans would be required to minimize effects on water resources in the area. And lastly, water would be needed at the site during construction and operation, primarily for dust control, but our preliminary plans at this point don't anticipate that we would use any groundwater to meet those needs. The proposed project site would fall within the BLM's Conley grazing allotment, and the project site uh, would comprise about 1% of this allotment area. If the project would um, have the potential to affect a grazing permittee, as always, the BLM would be required to provide notification of any change in allotment use at least two years in advance. And then if approved to move forward, uh, we would evaluate impacts on rangeland resources more fully in the NEPA document and develop any measures we needed to address those effects. The last resource we wanted to touch on was recreation and access. The project is not within a BLM recreation management area, and there are no developed recreation sites on BLM lands in the project footprint. There are a number of unimproved routes in the project area. The project may remove access to portions of these routes that cross the proposed project site. So um, moving forward, a detailed analysis of both recreation and public access would need to be undertaken. So this would include developing a traffic and transportation study and a traffic management plan. And as we noted on the slide, we do know that public access is going to be one of the issues that we'll need to work through during any future permitting process for the project. And before we move on to the question part of this, I wanted to touch briefly on the project schedule. So very preliminarily, we are looking at the variance process wrapping up here in the fall, as Selena mentioned earlier, uh, with resource studies and baseline studies surveys occurring into next year, um, then NEPA compliance into 2025, 
construction through 2026, and then commercial operation sometime in 2026. So Selena, do you wanna open, up, open it up to questions? Yes, thanks, Amy. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and take some questions. Again, you can raise your hand or type it in the chat. So anything, any questions you have about the uh, Caballero project, now is the time. All right, we got a couple hands up. Um, it looks like Ed LaRue, your, your hand may have come up first. You wanna go ahead and come off mute and ask your question? Yeah, no, so I'm uh, Ed LaRue with the Desert Tortoise Council and uh, appreciate the presentation and, um, and uh, it's very informative. And I guess the one question I have is, is I heard um, our speaker several times mention the same phrase, if this project passes the variance project or process. Um, could you elaborate a little bit on exactly what, what that means? I mean, what is the, the process that may or may not uh, allow this project to go forward? Thank you. Oh, thanks, Ed. Yeah, all I meant was by that was it's in the BLM's court now. We've submitted our application and this report and uh, the BLM will take into consideration any comments and make the final decision about making the pro um, approving the project to move forward into the NEPA process. So I didn't want to presuppose anything for the BLM. Yeah, Ed, and thank you for the question. So, um, so these these meetings are part of the process, and you know we're going to take any comments, um, concerns, and we are going to incorporate those into briefings that we have to do both here at the state level with our state director, and then at the national level with the BLM director. And ultimately, they get the final say whether or not the project is approved to move into NEPA. So, so that is that is the variance process. Did that answer your question? I, I do. I, I do think so. And, and if I could, maybe while I'm still uh, have the floor. Uh, so I understand, and I think we commented on this just a few months ago, maybe that uh, the solar PEIS 2012 is being revamped or reconsidered, and that there's a new analysis coming in. Do we have any sense as to when that kind of exercise will be completed, and how? Will that uh, affect your project? Yeah, good question. And unfortunately, I am not as involved um, with with that uh, solar PEIS as my counterpart um, uh, Derek is, and he couldn't be on the call with us this evening. So I'm not exactly sure when that is supposed to be wrapped up. Um, but but it potentially could um, create some changes. They they might uh, make some changes to the exclusion criteria. Uh, it's still kind of unknown exactly what all of, of that is going to unfold to be, but um, but yes, that that potentially uh, could make some. It, it will make some changes to the process. I don't know how much it'll affect Arizona, to be honest, but there is a potential. And uh, Tim, I saw your hand went up and down. Did you want to add something? <laughs> oh yeah, thank you so much. I'm sorry. I wanted to say that from my understanding and working on it, I think the new PEIS should be out next summer um, or be in effect. That's what kind of the preliminary calendar was for it. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. All right. Um, and I see a hand up from a Samsung. Uh, I don't know your name. So if you could please introduce yourself. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't download Zoom until we started. Uh, my name is Tyler Pitts out here in Litchfield Park. I do want to thank you all for holding this forum and, and allowing us to, to join you today. Um, I, I might have missed it, but did we get an estimate on how many megawatts of power this is is going to produce? And, and by proxy, like how many families that means? And I know this plan, plan goes to 2026. I think this is, you know, we're the Valley of the Sun this is great use of of our of our resources for to install this kind of energy production. Are there more plans to do so? So I can speak to this project, and it is a proposed two hundred megawatt project. Um, and then it includes batter a battery storage component as well. 
I don't know if Selena wants to um, comment further on solar in the field office. Sure, I'll, I'll take that, Amy. Um, Tyler, thank you for the question. And yeah, we do have lots of applications in and, and they all, or most of them have to go through the same process. So it's just a time, it takes time. And I, it's hard to say how many of these projects will, will actually get permitted. Um, so I don't have a solid response to that right now, but we are going through the variance process and um, on several different projects around the state and also um, the uh, NEPA process on a few projects as well that have already entered into NEPA. Great, thank you. Absolutely, thank you for the questions. All right, I don't see any other hands up and I don't see anything in the chat. So we'll give it another minute or so and then we'll turn it over to Southwest Crossroads. Thanks, Selena. Absolutely. Thank you, Amy. I did see your, your message, Ed, in the chat, and we will um, we will be sure to include that in the record. Thank you. And just so you know, um, any information that that you might be interested in, uh, please please refer to that e-planning website that I placed in the chat earlier. Um, if you have any further comments or anything to add, uh, anything that's captured in this chat will be included in the record. But if there's anything else that comes to mind, please refer to that e-planning website. And I see your hand went back up, Ed, so please feel free to come off mute. Thank you, Selena. Um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I did, I did look at the e-planning document. I saw that you had a KMZ, that you had a preliminary uh, pod, and that you had the variance process published there. What, what, what I was lacking and what I was hoping to get by putting my email in the uh, chat specifically to you was the documents that talk about that. I think our, our presentation mentioned that there was a certain classification relative to BLM development, and I'm not sure that I have that document. And then it would also benefit me to have uh, you referenced or the speaker referenced tortoise classes, uh, one, two, and three, I mean, categories. And so if, uh, if you could perhaps uh, email me the two documents that better describe what that uh, development classification and those tortoise categories are, that would really help. So from, um, in terms of this project, Caballero, the the variance factor analysis report that is posted on the e-planning site does have a section in chapter four that addresses wildlife, including t &E species and special status species. And within that special status species section, um, it describes those categories and how they apply to the project site. So on that e-planning um, project page, you need to scroll down uh, towards the bottom. They BLM adds these projects as they come in. So I think we're the last one or the second to the last one at this point. Thank you, Amy. And Kennedy, I see you're asking for the e-planning link again. So I, I just put it in the chat again. So hopefully you're able to, to get that information. All right. So it seems that there are no hands up at this time. I don't see any other questions in the chat. We will go ahead and, um, and you're welcome, Kennedy. We'll go ahead and proceed with our presentation um, and turn it over to Southwest Crossroads. Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yep, can hear you well. Great, thank you. Sound check. Well, hi, everyone. This is Darren Lawrence. I'm the Senior Director of Permitting at Long Road Energy. Long Road Energy is a pure play renewable energy developer and we construct projects and we own operate the majority of projects that we do develop. 
Um, we've been active in the United States with a leadership team that's been uh, together for over 15 years. And personally, I've got more than 15 years of renewable energy permitting experience throughout the Western United States. Uh, next slide. So uh, today we have a few people that can talk about the Southwest Crossroads Solar Project. Uh, Lisa Menzel is our project developer. She's in charge of all the components of project development. Lindsay Kester, she's an archeologist and our cultural resources specialist. We also have Ilya Neuenhusen, who's actually not on the call, but he's a biologist who's also working on this project. And then Kimberly Horn is here. They're a consultant uh, with Anna London and Jesse Carlson, who have been supporting this project studies, field work, and coordination with the Bureau of Land Management. And lastly, also not on the call, but it's Avi Buckles from Westland Resources. He's been supporting the cultural resource assessment, uh, but tonight Lindsay's going to take care of cultural resource discussion. Next slide. So as I mentioned, we've been really active throughout the United States, um, but here in Arizona, we have quite a portfolio as well. We've got 20 projects, uh, rooftop canopy, and also a number of large scale ground mounted solar systems. Um, as you see their number are in, uh, sorry, there's a number in the Maricopa uh, County area um, near Palo Alto, the Sunstreams uh, kind of series of projects we've ended up developing. And again, as I mentioned before, we plan on being a long-term owner operator for the projects that we do develop, again, like Southwest Crossroads. So next slide. And at this point, I'm gonna give the reins over to Alyssa Menzel, the project developer to continue. Thank you. Great, thanks, Darren. So the Southwest Crossroads project is a proposed 250 megawatt solar and battery storage project in unincorporated Maricopa County near the town of Gila Bend. Our proposed project boundary as shown on this map here um, in the red outline includes 1,189 acres of BLM land and 1,188 acres of private lands. So this would be the outer project boundary and then the main project components would be within a fenced area of roughly 1,600 acres. The project would have a roughly 2.5 mile long 500 kV Gentai to the south that would ultimately connect at the Gila River substation. And water for construction and operations of the project would be sourced from existing permitted whites. And the bulk of the water usage would be during construction for dust control purposes. Um, and then during the actual operations term of the project, there would be very minimal water usage for occasional panel washing, um, and typically this occurs less than annually. And if this project were to be permitted and built, we would expect that the project would be operational for a period of 30 to 35 years. In next slide. So uh, on this slide, I'll review our coordination thus far um, for the development of the project. We first submitted our SF-299 application to the BLM and our plan of development in September of 2022. Since then, we've had multiple meetings with both the BLM and Arizona Game and Fish Department throughout the end of last year and the first half of this year to discuss our proposed project design and sensitive resources in the area. And we plan to continue that close coordination with all of the agencies moving forward. Um, and then as far as special design considerations, there's two components that I would like to highlight here. And then we'll discuss the project in more detail on the following slides. Um, so the first is the Burrowing Owl relocation site. We have worked closely with BLM and Wild at Heart, um, another agency that's involved in this area to understand the relocation effort of burrowing owls um, on this part, portion of BLM land that's shown in the neon green kind of towards the center of the project. Um, and we have since avoided this area once it was determined to be suitable habitat for the burrowing owls. Um, additionally, the two lime green areas in the north red polygon show areas that we've removed from our proposed project boundary to serve as larger wildlife corridors that we will um, be excluding from our project area. 
Uh, and now I'll pass it over to Lindsay, who will speak to the cultural resources within the project vicinity. Oh, and Lindsay, you're on mute. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Just a quick presentation on our cultural resource our resources for the project. Our consultants conducted a class one literature review in January of this year. We learned a few things there, um, primarily that a large percentage of our project area has not been surveyed, or at least not to SHPO standards. A few sites were identified within a project area where there had been um, survey completed. And so what that tells us is that if this project moves forward to the NEPA process and corresponding Section 106 process, that we would expect to do a full class three inventory of those areas that haven't been surveyed after a direct and indirect APE are identified, defined by the consulting parties during the Section 106 process. And also during that process, we would expect that other important cultural resources, for example, cultural landscapes may be identified by consulting parties. And that's it for me. I'll turn it over to Jesse. Hello, everyone. Um, as Alyssa mentioned earlier, there are burrowing owl relocation sites within the, pro well, it was within the project area. However, it's been excluded from site. Um, as you can see in the orange polygon, that is the relocation area being operated by Wild at Heart. Um, this area encompasses 55 acres, uh, but Long Road has also designated a 150 foot buffer around this area as well. And so this is a total of 60 acres removed. Um, an initial preliminary site survey was conducted in December of last year, so 2022. Um, and Long Road has coordinated closely with Wild at Heart Hearts Habitat Manager uh, for these specific areas. Um, there are wildlife linkages uh, that have been removed from the project area. So these are two parts of the Sierra Estrella linkage. Um, it crosses in an east to west direction uh, with northern and southern corridors. These linkages are bisected by State Route 85, Old US uh, 80 Highway, as well as the Gila Bend Canal. Um, the southern linkage, as you can see on the graphic on our right here, also has a biogas facility, which crosses approximately half of its width. Um, due to these features on site, Long Road has revised the project boundary as well as fence lines to preserve wildlife movement across the canal crossings and through nearby dry wash drainage corridors. Uh, wildlife fencing will be used with regularly spaced gaps uh, to allow for ingress and egress of animals to access as well as traverse the site. In terms of land use area, please do refer to this graphic here on the right. Um, as you can see, the northern portion of the project is within the Hazen grazing allotment, uh, including BLM administered lands. There are no known active grazing permits maintained in this part of the project. Um, the maroon purple portion you see here is the Bighorn grazing allotment. Um, it traverses some portions of the project as well as the generation transmission line, uh, but these are not on BLM lands. They are within the state and private lands only. Uh, the project will coordinate with, e with easement and allotment holders. Um, there are no known authorized public recreation uh, within this part of the project. Um, and lastly, our designated areas. Uh, the project will avoid exclusion and avoidance areas, Sonoran Desert Tortoise Habitat, as well as Visual Resource Management Class 1 and 2 areas. The Southern PV Arrays and Gentai are within a BLM <clears throat> ACEC polygon. However, these parts of the project are not on BLM lands. And lastly, Long Road is exploring ways to co-locate the Gentai and uh, with other linear developments within the area. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much uh, for everyone for your time and we'll open up the floor to questions. Thank you.
All right, thank you, Jesse. Yes, yeah, so please, same as last time, if you have questions, raise your hand or feel free to put them in the chat and we'll get those addressed. All right, I don't see anything coming up. Ed, I did want to mention that um, I, we did take note of your uh, the comment you had put in the chat, and we are going to get your contact information added to our interested parties list. So, um, okay, I do see a, ha a hand up. Chris, did you want to come off mute? Yeah, um, I just thought it was worth mentioning because we had some um, interest from Tyler, I believe it was. Uh, about current projects. Um, do you want to mention the Vulcan solar scoping period that's going on? Sure, go right ahead. <laughs> okay. So right now in the lower Sonoran field office, uh, we are accepting scoping comments for a, a large solar development that is to be um, west of Arlington. Um, and I will uh, put that into the chat for your reference. Um, you can just click on the link and then uh, uh, on the left-hand side of the web page, there will be a place for that uh, in big green uh, button that says participate now. If you'd like to add uh, scoping comments, uh, you may do so. Uh, and you can review all of the um, information on that project as well using this link. Thank you, Chris. All right, Ed, you have your hand up. Go ahead and ask your question. Thanks. Um, so I'm, I'm a little confused in that um, uh, the presentation continued to refer to this as the long road solar project and it's referred to as the southwest crossroad project at your planning site so what's the um what's the relationship between those two different terms it, hey this is darren i can answer that long road energy is the renewable energy company and then for each one of our projects we set up an llc so southwest crossroads is the name of the project and the project company that's a fully owned subsidiary of long road energy so we develop a lot of different projects and Every, every one of them has a name and then an associated LLC for ownership. Okay, thanks for that. And then, you know, as a member of the public coming in, you know, we, we're, uh, we got two different projects going on here. Are they both have comments due on September the 4th? And I assume that we need to address them in separate documents. Um, so yes, please uh, um, provide any uh, comments by September 4th for either project. Um, and in separate documents, I, I don't know that that's necessary. I, if you're going to send um, like an email to the email address that's shown on your screen, you can just go ahead and um, put comments for either project or both projects if you'd like. Um, so a, sing a single letter that, that addresses separately the two different projects is acceptable. They don't have to be separate comment letters. Yes, sir. Okay, thank should you. be fine. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. All right. Any other questions? Okay. Um, well, thank you all for joining us tonight. And again, if you if you didn't uh, couldn't think of your question, you need to sleep on it. Um, whatever it may be, you have thirty days. So please feel free to go ahead and submit any written questions um, between now and September fourth. And again, thank you for joining joining us this evening. Hope you all have a good evening. <laughs>